Good morning, everyone. This is the Allen Care Show, and I am Elisa Walker from Allen Hospital in Waterloo. The Allen Care Show is now in our 10th year here on KBBG, and we just want to say thank you to all of the monthly listeners. We want to talk about women's health issues and ways you can keep yourself and your family healthy. Now, as you know, women tend to make most of the health care decisions for their families, so we'll talk about things that will help you make those choices. We'll also introduce you to the health care experts from Allen Hospital, Allen College, and United Medical Park. I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Becky Dumler from Allen Hospital Heart and Vascular Center. Now, Becky is here today and will be talking with us about hearts and what you can do when your heart rhythm is not normal. Good morning, Becky, and welcome to the Allen Care Show. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here. Before we get started about um, our heart program today, can you tell our listeners who are new to us today a little bit about yourself and your background and what brings you to your present position? I sure will. I've been at Allen Hospital a very long time and I've been a registered nurse there. And for most of the time I've been there, I've worked in the heart center. Um, so um, I just work right now with heart patients. And I want our listeners to know that I have a, you know, an expert with us, so can you kind of share how long you've been with us? I've been there 45 years. Isn't that, I was going to uh, work until we had kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> So we are truly blessed to have you today. Again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, we're here to talk about what to do when our heart rhythm is not normal. Becky, where do we start and how do we start? Well, first I'm going to just um, get you to understand how this heart's electrical system, and the heart has its own electrical supply. I want you to think of like in your basements in the spring if you have a sump pump, and if it's raining and it's going to flood, well, that pump will take in water and then pump it out to where it needs to go. Well, the only way that some pump is going to work is if it has an electrical supply to make it work. The heart is the same way. Normally, the heart beat is going to start, the electrical part will start what's called the SA node, and that's the natural pacemaker of the heart. Okay. And that will make the heart beat about 60 to 100 times a minute. And this will uh, help the top part of the heart contract. And then the second energy level is called the AV node. And this is like, and hmm. the heart is, is so marvelous. It's got a backup system. It wants us to survive. It wants to live. So the AV node is like the auxiliary power. Okay. And it will take this impulse and increase it and pass it on down to the ventricles, which will pump the blood out to the rest of the body. The AV node heart rate is about uh, 20 to 60 beats a minute. Yeah. And so it beats a little slower, but it, but it still is, like I say, a, you know, an auxiliary uh, backup. So more like a generator, would it's you say? It's like the generator, okay. right. Um, so this electrical system then in the heart is responsible. It helps move the blood around the chambers of the heart. And, uh, you know, like I said, the normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute at rest. Okay. And at rest means when we're actually sitting down, sitting not down. doing anything. Right. No movement whatsoever. Right. And with activity, your heart rate should go up. That's normal. It should go up. Okay. So we're going to talk about the arrhythmia of the heart. It's a big word, but all it means is your heart beats are regular. Okay. It's not beating. Your heartbeat should be regular. And it does not mean too fast or too slow. Okay. It just means that it's out of its normal rhythm. Um, everybody, it may feel like your heart has skipped a beat, mm -hmm. has an added beat, a fluttering, or uh, beating way too fast or too slow. But you may feel nothing at all if you're having an arrhythmia. Um, everybody has arrhythmia. You know, you'll, you'll feel this like your heart turns over in your chest sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody has that, or like it pauses a minute. Um, 
a lot of arrhythmias can be um, harmless okay. or they can be an emergency. Now, Becky, is this similar to when people um, say, I have a heart murmur? Um, a heart murmur is, is a, a sound that they hear. Okay. And a lot of those are very innocent. They don't mean much, but there are some heart murmurs that uh, can create arrhythmias. Okay. And um, so if you feel something happening with your heartbeat and you're not feeling well at all, mm -hmm. that's a 911 call. And you want to go there so doctors can find out what it is and what they can do about it. Becky, can you explain um, when you say when you feel something is irregular or not right with your heart, what, how would you describe that for the listeners? Um, it will be, usually you don't even feel your heart beating at all. You don't know it. Okay. And so, um, it, like I said, if it's an occasional, you don't have to do nothing about it. But if you start noticing a pattern where um, it's going to, it pauses or, or you feel your chest will just feel like it, it's quit a beat and then goes on. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Or if you'll feel a real fast boo 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 of the heart beating fast. Or some people it'll be just briefly but their heart just all of a sudden goes too slow. And, and it's like, something that we would be able to tell. Right. And this would be that enough moment. that you would feel maybe a little dizzy and then, and then you're better. You know. Mm, okay. um, but that's what you need to get okay. checked out. Okay, some of the arrhythmias I'm going to talk about, um, and, and when I say these, you're going to know people that have probably had them, because mm -hmm. these I'm going through, there's lots of them, but I'm going through the common ones that a okay. lot of people have. Atrial fibrillation, or atrial flutter, is a common irregular heart arrhythmia, and this is caused when the upper chambers of the atrium of the heart will beat irregularly. Um, and um, this can be a fast rate or, or a normal rate. Um, usually when it's untreated, it will be a faster rate. But this needs to be treated because the heart's chambers are not emptying normally. Mm. And blood clots can form. And then when the heart throws these out, they go to the brain and a stroke happens. Okay. This is a rhythm that some people then would be put on blood thinners to prevent blood clots from forming. Now, I have known people that their first sign that they're having any trouble is they come in with a stroke okay. and they do an EKG and here they're in atrial fibrillation and they don't know what have no idea. Yeah. So, you know, the sooner this one's treated, um, it's treated with medication, um, you know, it's treated sometimes uh, they have to do a shock to get you back into normal rhythm, mm -hmm. but um, if you're feeling that your heart's irregular for a period of time, this is why you need to get into your doctor's office and mm -hmm. get it diagnosed. And no messing around. No messing around. Ventricular, the next two are, are um, serious arrhythmias, and the first one's ventricular tachycardia, or VTAC, and this is a rapid heart rate starting from the heart's lower chambers, or the ventricles. And um, because the heart is beating too fast, the chambers can't fill up with enough blood. Hmm. Um, this sometimes can be a, a serious arrhythmia in people that have heart disease and don't know it. Wow. This can go on then to what's called ventricular fibrillation. And this happens when the heart's lower chambers just quiver. They're not even beating anymore. Just kind of like a shaking. A shaking, right? Okay. And the heart cannot contract or pump blood to the body. Mm. And this is a medical emergency and must be treated. Um, CPR and defibrillation as soon as possible. Um, when you hear cold blues at the hospital, mm -hmm. this would be one of the reasons for this. Um, and so, um, you know, this responds well the sooner that they get it treated and that they have a shock to the heart, then they will shock it back into normal rhythm. And I would just like to put a plug in for CPR. I think it's so important that everyone learns CPR, both children, infants, and adults. And then also with the de um, defibrillization, 
it's good to see there's a lot of the AEDs around. There are, and they're So everywhere. that's awesome, yes. They're yes. in schools, they're in shopping centers, they're everywhere, and you know, if you see someone and just grab one, and the it'll talk you through exactly mm -hmm. what you have to do, so it isn't, you know, like I said, the sooner that happens, the better the re outcomes are. Um, you know, you'll hear the terms bradycardia, which is just a slow rhythm, um, there's also another one called tachycardia, which is a fast rhythm. Um, but this again is the electrical heart systems. Um, some medications that people are on, and I bring this out because a lot of people are on blood pressure pills mm -hmm. and things yes. like that. They want the heart to go slower. And sometimes mm -hmm. then, uh, after they've been on them a couple months, it's really going slower. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not feeling good. Well, then they should get back to the doctor's to office. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other arrhythmia that we will see are called heart blocks. And um, heart block is uh, the SA node, remember the natural pacemaker that we talked about? Yes. It's blocked. Um, so the electrical impulses aren't getting through. The heart will be irregular and often slow. Mm -hmm. And this um, is one of the instances that you, and we're going to be talking about this, that you need to have a pacemaker. And there's different degrees of heart block. And again, your doctor would know this. And it would be determined by an EKG. OK. So really, there are five types of arrhythmia. That we've gone through. That we've gone through. Yeah. The most common. Ones. The most common, and some people, you know, as they come in with, with, uh, but but you have to go if you're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. Get in, just get in, and then because you can't guess it until you've had that EKG to figure out what it is. Um, so we can go go right into these symptoms. Yes, let's let's just jump right into the symptoms because just in case we have some listeners, um, and I hope that we do, that has their pencil and paper with them, so we can discuss more in detail regarding the symptoms of arrhythmia. Okay, arrhythmia. Remember, these are just it's not the normal beat of the heart. Um, like I said, it can be silent, meaning you don't have any symptoms but your doctor could still find an irregular heartbeat during a physical exam by checking your pulse. And if you'd ever check your pulse, and that's another neat thing that people should know how to do. Um, you know, just go down the thumb and you'll feel the pulse in the wrist and, and it should be beating regular. Um, if it isn't, you know, that'd be a time to go in and, and have that check. Mm -hmm. But symptoms that you're in trouble with is arrhythmia. Palpitations. It feels, you can just feel your heart beating. A feeling of skip beats. And this isn't just occasionally, it's, it's going on. You know, it'll go back to normal and then mm -hmm. it'll go on again. A fluttering or flip-flop in your chest. Um, another one that isn't good is the pounding in the chest. You know, it just feels like your heart's going to leap right out mm -hmm. of your chest, people will tell me. Um, dizziness or feeling like you're lightheaded and if you get this just sit down and I call 911. Um, shortness of breath. Um, sometimes you're not having any pain but you're mm -hmm. just short of breath. Well there's mm -hmm. something causing that. Um, with chest pains or tightness. If your heart's going really slow the mm -hmm. heart's not getting fed enough. And that's bad. And that's bad. And so that's, some people will get chest pain with that. Of course, fainting, that, that you'd call 911. Mm -hmm. Somebody faints, you'd call 911. Weakness, fatigue. And then some people, like a month before, when they come in and they come in with this really slow heart rate that mm -hmm. they need a pacer for, they, said, they will say to me, I have been so tired. Mm -hmm. I can't do nothing. And I said, well, I will always tell them, after this pacemaker, you're going to feel a whole heck of a lot better. I have even um, spoken with, with people who have said that sometimes they can't walk from one room to the next, and they're really tired, and the distance that they used to walk, they no longer can walk. And it's just kind of an unexplainable type of tired. And then even... Um, 
people said it kind of feels like a hiccup, like how you have hiccups. Yep. That's what the heart will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it, it, it's, wow. it's a weird feeling in the chest. I know I, I get those every once in a while and it's like, wow. But this, you know, if you're, if you're exercise, what you do normally is decreasing in what you can do. Mm -hmm. That is a big, a big uh, mm -hmm. red flag to get in and be checked because, and they always go, well, I thought I was getting old. Well, aging doesn't happen that quick. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. So you need to get in and have it checked. Absolutely. Anyway, if any of these things are happening, remember 911. Um, there's never a bad 911 call. You, uh, you need to go in and, and make sure that things are okay. Um, I'm going to go into treatment. Okay. And unless you have anything else to add. No, let, let's just go talk about the treatment. Okay, the this is the treatment for the arrhythmia or these skip beats that are going on. Okay. And, of course, treatment's going to depend on what type they are, from which part of the heart they're coming from, and how serious this arrhythmia is. Um, some people with arrhythmias don't need treatment. Mm -hmm. Others uh, may need medication, and this is where I've been in the business 45 years. I have seen so many medications come out I bet. that treat the heart, that, that help people, you know, that, that they have a condition and now it takes a pill a day to help, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Um, this is where I've seen some of the bigger changes plus the cath lab, you know, interventions that they do. Um, some just have to make lifestyle changes. Um, one of the things I'm going to bring up right here is alcohol in large amounts affect the heart. And there, there's a thing called alcoholic heart syndromes, and they have these dangerous PVCs. Um, and so that is one, when they say lifestyle changes, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that they're talking about. Uh, some people then can even have surgery that they, that they, you know, would need to make this uh, arrhythmia better. Um, and then these antiarrhythmic drugs, that's what they're called, are given to control the heart rhythm and keep it in normal rhythm. Um, a lot of people then are on anticoagulants or blood thinners or antiplatelet drugs, and these thin the blood and lower the risk of blood clots forming. So these people like in um, atrial fibrillation that we talked about, this would be one of their treatments. And then some of the common drugs, <clears throat> you know, you have your Plavix, Plavix and you have and your Lasix, Coumadin, Coumadin and Lasix. Right. Lasix can help with, uh, some of them have to be, that's a, a water pill, but some of them have to be on that also. Okay, I'm gonna talk about devices. And I'll tell you, the use of devices is one of these tremendous um, helps to the heart and to people to help uh, extend life and, and help them be comfortable. Um, the, the, um, the, I'm going to talk about the pacemaker first because that's the easiest one. Okay. And the pacemaker <clears throat> is used for people with low heart rates. And there's a little device planted under the skin and then there's wires that go to the heart. And um, so it's the wires to the heart and then the uh, pulse generator, which will then house a battery and a tiny computer. And this will send impulses um, to this battery or to the computer. And what this does, it waits for your heart to beat. And if it isn't going to be in, and they can set this, they can set rate, they can set the interval time. But if it's not getting an impulse from your own heart, then it will go ahead and um, it's kind of shoots out, shoot them. out, shoot out, yep, yeah, uh, uh, you know, to uh, a charge that will make the heart beat. Amazing. It, it is amazing. I mean, it's been, and these have been around a very long time. They started out very large, and now mm -hmm. they're so tiny. Sometimes I, I say, do you have a pacemaker? And they go, yeah. And I, I look at their chest. I can't see nothing. I have to feel to feel the pacemaker. Um, but these are, um, you know, these are used. And then when they, um, when they, the battery goes, then they just open up the little incision 
take the old pacemaker out, put the new one in, and stitch it up. And, and you know, it's a very simple procedure, and people do very well with these. Um, so that's the pacemaker. Then there is, it's called um, the ICD, or the long, long version is, the implant, implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Now, this device is a very special pacemaker, mm -hmm. but it's used to treat, when we were talking about those ventricular tachycardia and ventic ventricular fibrillations that people can die from, um, then the ICD is still planted the same way, just like the pacemaker. It has leads that go to the heart, and it's got the, uh, the generator, you know, the battery, and the little computer. Uh, but it will track your heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. And when this detects a very fast, abnormal heart rhythm, it will then, right then, deliver the electrical shock to the heart muscle and cause the heart to beat normally again. Mm -hmm. um, and these, we have seen these, um, you know, being used quite a bit. So more. an increase in them. Right. Wow. Right. So those are the, the two you know, um, devices that we see a lot of them put in and, you know, they'll either come in to have a new pacemaker mm -hmm. or a new ICD or they're coming in to have the generator change because the battery is slower and, you know, they track all that at the pacemaker clinic. Mm -hmm. um, how is it common for someone to come in, let's say um, someone comes in and they have an EKG and from the EKG, they will wind up with an ICD? Right. Well, or they, they will do other tests because okay. usually the, they have the dangerous arrhythmias, um, people in, uh, that have congestive heart failure, um, that's, you know, getting to where they look at um, how effective that heart is and they're getting down to a real low percent of the heart working. Mm -hmm. These people will usually have um, ICDs put in because they will have a tendency to have more of the ventricular arrhythmias. Okay. So, um, you know, it just depends. But I have seen people come into the ER mm -hmm. and have a heart rate of 20, 30. Wow. And then they will put a temporary pacemaker in right then to get it, oh. to get them stable because mm -hmm. that's pretty low. And then they will have a permanent one put in. And the permanent one would be the ICD. No, the permanent pacemaker. The permanent pacemaker. Pace, yeah, both of those pacemaker ICDs, um, you know, they do a little bit different things, but okay. they're both planted under the skin. And how long normally are those procedures? Um, it's getting, it doesn't take long to get the, the generator or the battery in. It's getting the leads in. Mm. And so usually it's about an hour, but it's just getting the leads in the right spot and then you know, in the heart. You know, we talk about modern technology, and especially with the, the cardiology piece. You know, if you think about 20, 50 years ago, we wasn't even talking about, you know, the defense, and then even the size of the pacemakers. It's I remember when they used to be so big, and so like you said, now they're so small. It is. I mean, it's... It is, and, and you know, people um, died at a very young age of mm -hmm. heart. You know, when I started, years ago it was, I mean, they just didn't have life expectancy. And this is changing. And a lot of people, I tell them with heart, I, you may die of old age. Mm -hmm. How good would that be? Yeah. I want to kind of focus, um, go back, okay. because some of this, um, you know, can be preventable. And you, you mentioned um, a really key word, and that, that word was lifestyle. How important is lifestyle changes? I know you mentioned alcohol. What about like weight control, smoking? What what all comes to play when we're talking talking about preventable measures for heart disease? Preventable measures are, are very important, and that's why I love working with heart because if you know some diseases you get, boom, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Well, heart's not one of them. Heart is one that if you if you look at your lifestyle. You know, and you know what normal weight should be for you. Um, get, you know, cholesterol checked. And blood pressure is very important mm. because a lot of people with out of control blood pressure get an enlarged heart. 
and enlarged hearts don't pump well. And some of these end up with these, you know, devices. So keeping your blood pressure under control, um, you know, no signs and symptoms of heart. So if you do have a heart attack, you're not going to end up with a huge amount of damage. And are they still saying um, 120 for pretty good heart or, I mean, for blood pressure? Or has that even decreased down to well, 119? With some, some yeah, the it's, they're decreasing it some. They used okay. to say 140 over 90. Now they're saying, you know, that's a little bit too high, and mm -hmm. doctors are looking at, you know, 120s, 130s. So, so that's it's really, down. really important yeah. to know your, those numbers. Yeah. The lower on the blood pressure, the better off you are. Okay. And an EKG, I know we throw around acronyms a lot, you know, working in the hospital. Explain, you know, because some people say, you know, EKGs, EEGs, what are all these EGs going yeah. on? So EKGs are electrocardiograms. Now, they are, they are very beneficial in the right now. You know, they can't predict, are you going to have a heart attack mm. coming up? All they predict is what is happening right now. They can tell you if you've had a heart attack in the past, because once you have a scar on the heart, that will show up on the EKG. Okay. But it'll tell you, and that's why arrhythmias is very trackable with EKGs, and then you know, there's a lot more tests that they will perform if they mm -hmm. you come in, but that would be the initial, and that would tell you: in, Are you in a normal sinus rhythm? What's the rate? Mm -hmm. What you know? What is the arrhythmia that they're seeing? And so that is the here and now. You know, then they can do things like echocardiograms, where they can check chambers and if your heart's mm -hmm. enlarged. And there's different tests that they do, but. But they, they are an important part of the test. In fact, if you call an ambulance, they'd already start you on an EKG. So someone can have a normal EKG but still have other symptoms, and they might want to investigate, investigate and go a little bit further. I always tell people when you're talking about heart disease, and that's I, I know we're getting off the subject a little bit, but I just want to bring the point out about EKGs. If you are having an EKG and it's normal, and you have heart disease and you walk out that door and that artery decides to plug up, you could have a heart attack then. You know, so sometimes EKGs will not be the future, mm -hmm. but it will be the present. Wow, Becky, our time is just slipping away from us. Um, how, if any listeners have a question, how can they contact you? Well, I work on Too Heart at Allen, and the telephone number is 235-3800. And we're a day unit, so we're not there at night. Okay, you've been listening to the Allen Care Show, a show for women and their families. I have been your host, Elisa Walker. My very special guest today has been Becky Dumler from Allen Hospital Heart and Vascular Center. Becky, again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to I join me. I'm here, so thank you for having me. Please join me 10 a.m. on Thursday, June 18th for my next edition of the Allen Care Show right here on KBBG-FM, and thank you for listening.